China's Great Leap Forward campaign to build chips has resulted in project failures and corporate bankruptcy, which also signifies that the chip investment bubble has burst. Naturally, someone needs to take responsibility for the significant losses this has resulted in. China has swiftly unleashed a chip anti-corruption storm in recent days. The Minister of Industry and Information Technology, the top executives of the National Fund for Semiconductors, and many former and current top executives of the chip giant Tsinghua Unigroup have all been sacked. According to internal sources, the anti-corruption campaign, which triggered a major earthquake in the chip industry, stemmed from a question from Xi Jinping about the chip industry in early July. On July 30th. The CCP Central Commission for Discipline Inspection announced that Ding Wanwu, general manager of the National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, commonly known as the Big Fund, was under investigation. On July 28th, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, Xiao Yaqing, was fired. The CCP's plan to establish a world-class chip industry and eliminate the U.S. chip program. Was spearheaded by Xiao Yaqing. According to multiple sources, he allegedly slit his wrists in an attempt to commit suicide before being taken away for investigation. On August the second, the Tai Xin Group quoted multiple sources saying that on July sixteenth, Diao Shijing, former director of the electronics department of the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. And former president of Xinhua Unigroup was investigated by relevant authorities, along with Zhao Weiguo, the former chairman of Xinhua Unigroup. Also taken away on the same day was Li Luyuan, chairman of Beijing Zhiguang Technology Services Group Company. The three are still out of contact. On July fifteenth. Li Jun, former deputy director of the China Development Bank's China Development Fund Management Department, was investigated. Li Jun was involved in a large number of investment operations of the Big Fund, and was the former president of the Big Fund's management company, Huaxin Investment Management Company. On July 14th, Wang Wenzhong, a partner of Hongtai Fund. Which is a Shenzhen subsidiary of the Big Fund was investigated. It is reported that Wang Wanzhong and Liu Jun are classmates. According to the Tai Xin website, Liu Jun may have prompted investigations against Gao Songtao, former vice president of Huaxin Investment, as well as Yang Chenfan, deputy general director of the third investment department of Huaxin Investment. Taken together. These leaders in the chip industry have all been investigated, and they are all related to the big fund. The chip nest case attracted a lot of attention for a while, and some financial media noted that there have been rumors in the business that the dark night in the chip sector has arrived. The National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, commonly known as the Big Fund, was established by the CCP in 2014 in an effort to decrease China's reliance. On imported European and American chips, the fund is a blend of government funds and socialized capital, and was launched by China Development Bank, China Tobacco, Yezhuang State Investment, China Mobile, Shanghai Guosheng, China Electronics Technology Group, Zhiguang Communications, and Huaxin Investment. Huaxin Investment was established a year before the launch of the big fund, with China Development Bank providing 45% of the funding. Liu Jun, the then vice president of China Development Bank, served as the president of Huaxin Investment. The first phase of the big fund was subsequently managed solely by Huaxin Investment. The big fund focuses on investing in integrated circuit chip manufacturing, taking into consideration chip design, packaging and testing, equipment and materials, and other industries. As a result, the semiconductor industry has high expectations for this fund. In September 2014, the big fund's first phase was launched, raising more than 130 billion renminbi in capital. Approximately 70 of the 80 projects that had received funding were chip projects. 
As a result, the Chinese market for chip experienced a great leap forward movement. Furthermore, some construction engineering, pharmaceutical, clothing, cement, and other enterprises have also switched to manufacturing chips. A significant number of semiconductor projects and industrial parks have been established all across China. According to Chinese media reports, as of the beginning of October 2020, there were more than 50,000 chip related companies across the country. In the first half of 2020 alone, there were 12,700 new chip companies with a total industry investment of 10 trillion renminbi. In October 2019, the second phase of the big fund, which raised more than 200 million renminbi and focused on upstream equipment and materials, was launched. According to publicly available data, there are currently 37 foreign investments in this fund. Since the establishment of the big fund, Ding Wenwu has successfully served as the general manager and director during both its first and second phases. The Tsinghua Unigroup, once regarded as one of China's top semiconductor companies, is said to have close ties to the big fund. On February 13, 2015, the big fund invested 10 billion renminbi in the chip business of Tsinghua Unigroup. This is the fund's first substantial investment since its creation. Ten months later, the big fund invested 4.5 billion renminbi in Qiguang Chenrui, a subsidiary of Tsinghua Unigroup. Over the years with the backing of the big fund, Tsinghua Unigroup has been expanding aggressively in the chip market. In 2015 alone, Tsinghua Unigroup acquired a 51% stake in IT communications equipment company New H3C Technologies from HP for 2.5 billion US dollars. Invested 3.8 billion US dollars in global storage giant Western Digital and 600 million US dollars in semiconductor packaging and testing manufacturer Taiwan PowerTech Inc. According to rough estimates, Tsinghua Unigroup conducted more than a dozen mergers and acquisitions in 2015, with a total investment of more than 60 billion renminbi. In December 2016, Tsinghua Unigroup, together with the big fund, Hubei Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund and Hubei Science and Technology Investment Group Company, jointly invested 38.6 billion renminbi, to build a national memory-based project, the Yangtze Memory Technology Corp. Former chairman of Tsinghua Unigroup, Zhao Weiguo, is the chairman of Yangtze Memory Technology Corp. And Ding Wenwu is the vice chairman. The same year, Tsinghua Unigroup set up three semiconductor manufacturing facilities in Wuhan, Chengdu, and Nanjing with a planned total investment of more than 70 billion US dollars, earning Zhao Weiguo the nickname Chip Madman. In March 2017, Huaxin Investment, the sole management company of the big fund at the time, signed a strategic cooperation agreement with Tsinghua Unigroup. Huaxin Investment announced its intention to invest 50 billion renminbi in Tsinghua Unigroup to support the development and integration of its circuit-related business areas. In addition to direct investments, Tibet Jiguang Technology Development Company Limited, a subsidiary of Tsinghua Unigroup, owns 5% of the shares of the Shenzhen Nanqing Hongtai Equity Investment Fund, created by the Big Fund. It was announced in March 2020 that the Big Fund will invest $2.25 billion in Jiguang Chenrui, a Tsinghua Unigroup affiliate, as the first investment project of the big fund's second phase. However, the rapid expansion has also put pressure on the cash flow of Tsinghua Unigroup. Since 2017, the asset liability ratio of Tsinghua Unigroup has remained high. In July 2021, due to excessive expansion, Tsinghua Unigroup announced that it could not repay its due debts and immediately went into bankruptcy and reorganization. The debt of over 200 billion renminbi was finally taken over by the strategic investor of Zhe Liu Jianguang Consortium. The bankruptcy of Tsinghua Unigroup also declared the failure of big funds investment. Not only Tsinghua Unigroup went bankrupt, but more chip projects were unfinished and stopped.
In 2020, official media reported that at least six core making projects of tens of billions of dollars were unfinished. Among them, we have previously reported Wuhan Hongxin with an investment of up to 120 billion renminbi and Jinan Quanxin with an investment of 10 billion US dollars. The entire investment situation is practically a scam. According to 21st Century Business Herald, by the end of April 2022, at least 80% of China's chip project investment had problems. According to industry insiders, in the early years of large fund investment, the construction cost of some semiconductor factories only cost around 200 million renminbi in the beginning, but it was said to the public that the construction cost of the factory is nearly 2 billion renminbi, and there are many unknowns in the middle. China's Great Leap Forward campaign ended in unfinished projects and bankruptcy, which not only caused huge losses of state-owned assets, but also bursted the investment bubble in Chinese chips. Such a result is naturally not what Xi Jinping wants to see. According to insiders at the beginning of July, Xi Jinping asked, Integrated circuits have invested 200 billion renminbi in eight years. Why are they still stuck? Subsequently, a group of Chinese semiconductor industry leaders who once said that they would change the world's chip landscape were arrested one after another in the name of anti-corruption, triggering a major earthquake in China's semiconductor industry. Some scholars have analyzed the root cause and inner workings of the unfinished Chinese chip projects. James A. Lewis, vice president of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, an American think tank, told Free Asia, China's chip industry faces two major problems. One is corruption, which is an inherent problem in the Chinese economy itself. The other is the suppression of high-tech companies by the Chinese communist authorities. Between accelerating the development of high-tech industries such as chips and strengthening its authoritarian rule, Beijing is choosing the latter. Li Hengqing, an economist based in the United States, also pointed out in an interview that the CCP system lacks supervision. When the chip industry becomes a national strategy and invests with the power of the country, it naturally becomes a disaster area for corruption, because everyone in the circle has the same interests. Those chip bigwigs who participated didn't really want to get things done at first, and only thought about how to divide the cheese. In addition, the Chinese Communist Party's companies do not focus on research and development. According to data from IC Insights, a leading industry body, the United States now accounts for 55.8% of global chip R&D spending, while China accounts for only 3.1%. In the international market, the CCP has acquired a lot of advanced technologies by exchanging the market for technology, as well as using means such as high-tech introduction of talents and Thousand Talents program to buy relevant personnel to steal technologies and so on. They are trying to follow the same path in chip production. The chip industry is a large systematic project and it is built on generation to generation and one cannot be successful by taking the easy way out. TSMC, the world's largest chip maker, has twice sued China's largest chip maker, SMIC, for copying its process technology. Tech Insights, a well-known research organization, recently reported that SMIC produced and sold 7 NM chips last year, which seems to have broken through U.S. sanctions but are suspected of copying TSMC technology. The Western world is already aware of CCP's frauds, which is why the United States has imposed sanctions on Huawei and ZTE. In addition, the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives voted last week to pass the 200 Billion Chip Act, a bill aiming at revitalizing the U.S. chip manufacturing industry and countering the CCP. This was the trigger for China's investigation into internal corruption. Lewis believes that the CHIP Act will consolidate the current U.S. industry leadership. Chinese spokesman says it will be at least a decade before they catch up to the industry leaders. The bill will throw China a little further behind. Thank you.